1924. Well, sort of. This is a 1924 Ford Model T that was saved from being yard art. Let's go take a look at it. Oh, and the driver door doesn't open on these cars. There's only a passenger door. I graduated from engineering college this spring, and my family decided to give me this car as a graduation gift. My grandpa found it sitting alongside someone's driveway on the side of the road under a big fir tree. It had clearly been there a while. It wasn't listed as for sale, but he talked to the owner and they agreed to sell it to us uh, to save it from being yard art. Otherwise, a few more years sitting out there in the weather and the wet, this car would have been a lot harder to save. As it is, it just needed some long delayed maintenance and now it does run and drive. Let's go take a look at the condition. This car is a 1924 Model T Roadster, or, two, or a, um, a runabout, some people call them. I forget what the official factory um, advertisement for these were. Um, but 1924, this was the cheapest car you could buy, and even today, this is the cheapest car, I believe, in history to have ever been sold. If not, it's real close to it. In 1924, this car cost $260. In today's money, that's about $4,500 US dollars. So by far the cheapest car for a very capable car. These things can go about 40 or 45. I haven't driven this one that fast yet for reasons I'll show in a minute here. Um, but pretty capable car for being the cheapest one to be ever built and still running and driving almost 100 years later. Two more years to go. Uh, May of 1924 is when this car was made. So two more years to go and it'll be 100 years old. Um, reason why we're not driving this car real fast right now is these wheels. Uh, the front ones are these wood spoke wheels, and they're in pretty good shape for sitting outside in wet weather for a long time. But the spokes are a bit loose. Probably won't kind of hear that on camera a little bit. Um, so wood wheels are fairly dangerous, especially when they're loose like that. Um, if you corner too fast, could collapse in under you. Um, but these are definitely savable. I'm going to clean the paint off of these and soak them in linseed oil. That should swell these spokes back up. And then reseal them with a fresh coat of black paint and these wheels will be good to go. Um, this tire has it also has a slight leak, very slow leak on it, um, so it goes flat, you know, 24 hours or so after you pump it up. Uh, the rest of the tires all hold air. They're a little checkered, but they'll last for a while. They're not in terrible shape. Um, so that's the one thing that I need to fix before this car is really roadworthy, kind of. Um, the other thing that I fixed on this was the transmission. Um, the transmission bands in this car were uh, some weird type of black brake lining type material infused with brass wire. Um, some people say they work, but they are long since needed adjustment and uh, maintenance on them. Uh, the reverse drum had a pretty good scoring from a rivet in it, um, so it certainly wasn't smooth. But the reverse is the one you use the least, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, this car came with a bunch of extra parts and had a spare set of Kevlar bands that had never been installed yet. So I swapped out those weird brake lining bands for Kevlar. I'm still controversy on whether Kevlar is good or not. Um, I have it in both of my cars and we'll see, but I'm, I'm pretty confident. You just have to know how to drive it right and the Kevlar should be able to hold up and keep the drums intact as well. Um, so that, that work on the transmission and this on the tires is really all that needed to be done from this car to make it roadworthy. Um, I did change out the spark plugs. It came with a set of new spark plugs as well. Um, the old ones weren't in terrible shape, but they were pretty rusted in there real bad. I wanted to get them out and get the wells cleaned up around the spark plugs. Um, but So I had a new set of spark plugs, so I gapped those and put them in. Um, other than that, I haven't done anything to the inside of the motor. I changed the oil. It wasn't terrible, but I mean, it was dirty, but there was nothing in it. No water or metal or anything. Um, so I, I changed the oil and did the spark plugs. That's about all I did under here. Um, I don't know if the generator is working for sure or not, but I know the starter is not working. This car had an optional electric starter for these years in Model Ts. It was optional. I don't know the exact ratio of how many cars had them versus didn't. Um, a lot of cars didn't have them in 24, but this one does. So. In theory, it should be really easy to start, but the brushes on the starter are bad and one of the brush carriers is broken, so I'm gonna have to pull that off and fix it before it'll work. 
So right now it's only starting by the hand crank right now, but it's, it starts up really easily. Uh, the first time I started it, it took three pulls after priming it and it fired right up. And ever since then it's fired right up. I even got some free starts out of it. If you prime it just right and then turn the ignition on, sometimes it'll start without even having to give it a final crank. So it's not hard to starting it by the crank at all. The other thing under here is this aftermarket water pump. This is not stock to a Model T, but it was a very popular accessory for the period. Um, in the late 20s and 30s, people started putting those on T's. A lot of thoughts as to why. Um, radiators could be breaking down, the solder joints loosening up and maybe don't work as well as they should, but stock, they do not need a water pump. If it's in good condition, you shouldn't need one. My other car doesn't have one. I haven't been able to dr drive it much. It's got some other problems. Um, but it never had one either. But I got a new radiator for it. This one I'm going to run the original radiator because it's not leaking. So far there's no coolant leaks. I thought there would be one on this pump. That's one downside of having pumps is they often have leaks. It looked like there was residue from leaking. And it was leaking a little bit before I tightened that nut. I just tightened the nut a little bit and it stops leaking. So I'm going to leave that on for now until it starts leaking really bad or something. And then I'll take it off. But for right now it's, it's running fine. Some people like them for parades, and I expect this car to maybe do a little more of the parade stuff. Um, if we're driving slow all the time, it does help to circulate the fluid, the, the coolant through a little bit better. But it's not, it's really not necessary under normal conditions. Horn doesn't work either. I need to get some, uh, take that apart. I bet the diaphragm's probably bad in it. Maybe the windings, I don't know, but we'll play with the horn, get that working. Um, other fun thing on the front here is the headlights. I believe this headlight lens is original. This one is old. It's got the same markings and stuff on it, but I don't know. I don't think it's original. Um, this one, I don't know if you can tell with the camera, maybe just barely, is starting to turn purple. It's got a little purple hue to it. The old glass does that because of the lead content in it. It reacts with sunlight or something. The sunlight turns it purple. I've seen some cars where both headlights were original and they sat outside for a long time and they can get really dark purple. It's kind of cool. Now, so that one just has a slight tinge to it, and this one doesn't. Um, it'd be kind of cool if I could find another one to match and have purple headlights. But because it's sat outside, it's starting to turn purple. And it's probably going to be in the garage a bit more now, so it, it shouldn't turn too much darker unless I purposely put it outside. Um, other thing on the front is these aftermarket springs. The Model T has an interesting system of a transverse leaf spring. There's only one leaf spring in both the front and the back, not two, as in almost any other car ever made. Um, Model T uses a transverse leaf spring. Uh, I've not been able to drive this one too much. I've been told that if you hit railroad tracks with these, they jump sideways because the leaf spring is sideways. Um, so they, they handle a little differently. And this is a period accessory. People like putting these springs on them to dampen the, the vibrations. They can kind of get a bit bouncy and uncontrolled without a shock absorber on it. So I think the springs kind of help to dampen some of that. Um, has a cool little leather keeper to put the crank handle in keep it from rattling around too uh, yeah so that's the front shocks on it oh it also has an aftermarket the motometer these were very popular accessory um, not from the factory on this car but very popular accessory it's a little uh, mercury thermometer on the inside of there and it tells you when you're in the right operating temperature. So there's a clear spot in the back. If it's somewhere in there, you know you're in proper operating temperature. If it's low, you're good. If it's high, obviously you're overheating. I haven't had this car running enough to see it. I don't know if that temp thermometer is working or not. Um, I would think I've ran it enough to see, but I haven't seen the mercury move on it. I'll probably make a video on crank starting and driving one of these at some point. There's plenty of others on YouTube as well. So I won't get into all the details now. This video is getting kind of long. But just real briefly, I'm going to crank it a few times with the key off. So double check the key is off. It is. Crank it a few times with the key off and pulling the choke just to get it primed. Now we'll turn the key on. Might give a start. We'll see.
killed it. That was a free start. It was at the right stroke in its uh, cycle when I turned the key on and because I'd already primed it with the choke there was plenty of fuel in there. It was at the right spot so when I turned the key on the spark plug fired and it started by itself. That's always nice when that happens. It's happened quite a bit with this car whenever I start it. I don't know every three or four times it's been doing it so far. Um, but then it promptly died and I think that's because we're on a slight hill. The camera may not show up but this is a gradual uphill slope here. And this car has a gas tank under the seat. So with a gas tank under the seat and no fuel pump, there's a gravity fed to the carburetor. And if the carburetor is higher than the fuel level in the tank, the carburetor doesn't get fuel. So there's probably a little bit sitting in the bowl of the carburetor. But that was enough to fire it for a few seconds and then it needed to refill from the tank and couldn't. So I've dumped a little bit more fuel in the tank. Let's see if she'll start now. Again, prime it a few times. See if she fires again. <laughs> 